Right at it. Right at it. Oh, John and he's Spence. done it again. Just as he did at the John Deere for his first win. Hello and welcome in to episode number 87 of the Go Get That podcast. A um, little bit different than we were expecting uh, this morning. Apologies, I'm wanted. But um, the, yeah, it's Craig Ranch week, and usually that means sunshine, rainbows, and happiness. Jubilance. In the Dan camp. Uh, but a left wrist tendon has changed all of that. Um, so we're going to look, we don't want to speculate too much. We did get, um, some news from George Savarikas that we can talk about a little bit, I think. Um, and then we'll talk about a little bit about the, the Byron Nelson this week, a little bit about Wells Fargo, a little bit about what the future might look like, um, without trying to do talk about too much or get into too much, um, that we don't know. So, um, yeah, without further ado, Bob and Jordan are here, boys. Um, I guess, well, first, like, got the news yesterday at, like, 6. I'm curious your initial reactions, generally. Yeah, I'm still shocked, obviously. It's really not anything you can expect. I mean, it was kind of out of nowhere, right? So, it's more just... Where do we go from here? Which we don't really know. Um, we both know that Jordan will give it everything he possibly can in terms of playing next week because there's a major. Uh, but we also know that he's not going to risk long-term damage um, for one tournament. So we'll see. It's It's a waiting game. It's unfortunate. I know a lot of people yesterday were very, very disappointed with the news, as was I, as was Jordan, as was Dan. But uh, it, it's a waiting game now. We just got to kind of wait for answers. The The wrist is not a good injury for a golfer, but it's there are a lot of unknowns. Uh, it, they didn't give us many specifics, so we're not going to speculate, and we'll leave it at that. Yeah, props to George Savarikas for the update today. Um. Thanks for the one one reporter, you know, doing some digging on it. It's not like someone's going for a career grand slam next week and entering probably with his best chance in like six, seven years of doing that. Um, but yeah, it's obviously disappointing just the timing of it. I mean, I could only imagine what Jordan's thinking with the timing of it. Uh, and yeah, we're not doctors. So like, we don't really know how he's feeling, what it possibly could be. I think Bob kind of alluded to it, you know, a wrist for a golfer is never not ideal at all. I mean, neither is the back, neither is a knee, but I mean, you swing with your left wrist. So obviously a lot of force being put on it, but props to George for dropping that report today. It was nice to get a little bit more info. Um, and it was nice to see George say that, you know, Jordan's at least, I assume Jordan didn't tell him directly, but Jordan's camp as agent all that told him that Jordan's still at least considering playing next week. He gave us the 50 50. Um, so I think, you know, long term, in terms of playing, I guess, in the somewhat near future, I guess that bodes well if he's 50 50 for this week. But at the same time, like, again, we're it's so much is still in the air. All we all George said was the left wrist, left tendon. Like, I mean, there could be so much going on with the single tendon. The, you know, the, how bad that tendon is. Is it just, you know, more precautionary this week? How major is it? There's so much that's up in the air and hopefully we'll learn more within the near future. Yeah. I do think that I speak for most Spieth fans. Uh, just hearing something about it was quite nice. Like I, I think when Jordan released the statement, obviously Jordan himself is a very, private guy like he doesn't run his instagram he doesn't run his twitter uh you see very few pictures of him uh in public or they're just harder to find i suppose you can dig them up but uh he doesn't share a lot about his personal life 
Um, and the statement kind of said the same thing. It's like, yeah, my left wrist really hurt. Like he used the word severe. Um, and then he said he spoke to medical professionals, which also I think caught my eye. I know Jordan, I talked about it, this Jordan, and I talked about it, um, (laughs) and said that those were kind of the two key, like quotes or phrases that, um, were interesting in, in the negative sense. Um, so to hear 50 50 is great. Uh, and hopefully, you know, that means certain things are off the table. Um, but again, I, we, we don't know enough, uh, but I think we can speak on it. It just sucks. The timing's awful, right? Like he was playing some of the best golf he's played six years, five, five, six, like since 2017. I mean, 2021, I think he had passed that. I think he was playing better than he did in 2021. Um, or at least close to it. So it just bad timing. You hope for the best. Uh, I don't know if we or anybody really saw this coming, um, which makes it all the more shocking, all the more disappointing. Um, but hopefully it's a quick turnaround. But, I mean, especially for wrists in general, like not good for golf. You mentioned back. You mentioned knee. But – the left wrist for Jordan Spieth, like everybody talks about the the weak left, you know, left hand grip. The you know, PJ Tour commentators say it all the time. Lisa Lisa Cornwell, Craig Perks, Shout out uh, Mark Immelman, um, all those guys. Will McKenzie, they, they're just all going in on that left that weak left hand grip, and you know this is concerning it's part of the weak left grip is part of what the struggles uh are a big part of the struggles in 19 and 20 um and 18 as well although he just missed a lot of putts in 2018 but you know you hope that the wd this week from craig ranch is uh more of a okay i've had something it's not the same injury but it's a more preventative than it is just trying to gut it out and play through it for sponsors or fans because he's had a bad experience from doing that in the past so hopefully that that leads to good news but um as of now it's it's really just a waiting game until friday so yeah. uh i won't really be like tuned into craig ranch unfortunately hate to You're say not all it done. Um, I know Dan will still be watching intently as it is a major, but, <laughs> yep. um, yeah, I, I just like, uh, I feel like this is not just speed fans. The, the biggest news for golf for the next few weeks is going to be most likely on Friday. Um, uh, that will be very telling. Uh, the PGA Tour ratings will be affected very strongly by whether Jordan Spieth plays the PGA or not. That's just how it is. Um, we've never really dealt with an injury, so to say, to Jordan, um, like long term. So we don't know whether that's what's going to happen. Um, so it's just hope for the best and wait. Basically, tiger tiger fans over yes, there. Yes, you know, yes, waiting for commitments on Friday after hours, which is brutal. But no, it was interesting to hear that it was the tendon and not the bone chip that he suffered. Yeah, um, that was interesting to see. I don't really know which is worse. Again, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I do know that the bone chip played a probably a pretty significant role into the fall off in 19 and 20. So I was kind of kind of nice to see that it wasn't that just because i mean we have bad memories of a bone chip you know costing jordan's game to go down the toilet but i mean obviously again not a doctor but a tendon isn't great either um a lot of stress on it and you know his statement kind of spoke for itself he said it was severe enough for him to you know seek out medical professionals which obviously isn't ideal it's not like something he could you know take care of himself which obviously isn't great but you know i'll keep reiterating what dan and baba said it's it's a waiting game really i mean i highly doubt we'll hear much else um jordan's private it's not like he's coming out and giving us the full details he just gave us a 
severe risk. George came out today, gave us a little bit more, but besides that, I don't really know what to expect unless he, you know, does play next week and I'm sure he'll have a presser and maybe we can learn a bit more. Yeah, I think that's well said. I don't know if we can touch on a lot more of it without going, excuse me, too much into the ifs, ands, and buts or the right, yeah. potential um, of what might be, what might, what might not be. Um, and, and it, you know, I, it, it's, it's disappointing. Uh, it's equally as kind of frustrating as you see all this PGA championship stuff come out and you see, I mean, Jordan, you told me today that your mood or opinion kind of changed on Oak Hill just over the past couple of days, just seeing it on flyovers or, or the hole by hole kind of stuff. Um, so I think next week's course is going to be awesome. Obviously, it'll be, you know, uh, sort of the Walmart Craig Ranch, I suppose. But um, <laughs> it's it's still a great, great, great venue next week, and I hope Spieth gets the opportunity to tee it up. Um, but again, man, being Tiger fans is, or Tiger commitment, Tiger commitment watch fans, for Friday, I think is, it's tough. It really is. But uh any any thoughts about uh any more thoughts on this or I guess Wells Fargo or anything that has gone no, on? No, yeah. The um couple weeks or week or so. The Wells Fargo was rough. Yeah, it was. it was rough. It we really don't know whether the injury had any effect on that play, so I'm not gonna sit here and blame it on that yet. But uh it was the driver was a real problem. Real, real problem. Um if he drives like that, it'll kill. Might as well stay home and rest. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully that that was a one-off because that can't happen again. Um, it was awful. He was hitting shots that without trees would have been a hundred yards left of the side of the fairway. <laughs> so, um, that was my biggest takeaway. I I missed a lot of the round, but it was from what I saw, every drive was just wayward mostly left it was it i was a little surprised to see him as unsharp as he was yeah he was very um, unsharp every think, shot was just not kind of what he we're used to from him you know? right as, especially the past sort of month um or two months i guess really since waste management uh and again injury no injury we don't know uh and we probably won't may not find out for like a little while, you know, but um, the I thought Thursday was kind of Thursday was a, kind of what I expected actually. Um, a little bit of a slow start, and then really grinded well to get to two under. Uh, well, I should say two under through seventeen was nice, and then the triple on eighteen was devastating. Uh, yeah, devastating. Uh, to use a a Bob word pathetic um yeah i mean you could just look up a thesaurus of those words and just go down the list it was all of them uh and then friday was obviously just you know shoot a 77 i think worst round since the northern trust maybe that's 79 on that saturday or something but um it uh yeah it certainly wasn't anything pretty and then of course xander shoffley turns into a uh, classic kind of Xander Sunday, or he grabs the lead from Wyndham Clark, who granted Wyndham played great, but Xander was mid again on a Sunday and didn't get the job done. I know Jordan and I had some go get that outright points on him, and that was a little disappointing. But uh, I do, Bob, you mentioned Quail Hollow is not your favorite golf course. And I thought it was okay, but I'm really, yeah, I don't think there's anything like overly impressive about it other than yeah. it's really well kept and it's somewhat difficult. It's it's nice and green. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> and you can, you can make some big numbers, it. but yeah. I, uh, the the three old stretch at the end, the green mile is pretty cool, but like other yeah. than that, well, that course I, has no like character to it at all. Yeah, I fourth I liked fourteen and fifteen though too. 
the short four yeah. and the par five. I, yeah. But the rest yeah. of it was kind of. Fourteen is a good hole. Fourteen is a good hole. Probably the best hole in the golf course. I don't know. Does it? Where does it rank in terms of short par fours on tour? It's up there. Eight has to be know. probably the worst short par four on tour. Yeah, I eight think. is weird. I don't eight is terrible. Eight. eight, you don't get rewarded with good shots. Like it's. Yeah, I hate eight, but fourteen's very good par four. What do you think of W Fargo, Jordan? Um, I said it in one of our group chats a couple of days ago. I think as a tour stop, I don't mind it. I think it's decent. It's a bad major venue. But for it's like bad a tour, uh, I don't agree with that. I think for a tour stop, it's pretty decent. I think there's a lot of, I know Dan has this, you know, romantic relationship with Craig Ranch, but I can't stand watching Craig Ranch. Um, I mean, freaking quite the statement. Why not? PGA West for the freaking American Express. Those golf courses bore me. Um, I mean, we got Red Colonial in two weeks. I don't like Colonial that much. To be uh, fair. Really? You don't like Colonial? No, I don't like Colonial. I like that he plays well there. That's about it. Oh. <laughs> to be fair, to be like fair Colonial. to Craig Ranch, I actually quite enjoy Craig Ranch. Um, yeah. There's nothing wrong with a minus 25 winner every once in a while. Okay, I think it's, it's actually a pretty decent course. It's it's, it's pretty fun because it gets kind of firm. Um, it's just getting screwed, but it gets a bad spot on the schedule. You're right. It, it it's not the golf course's fault. It's easy, yeah, but like, yeah, sort of. Those might be the most demanding wedge shots. I think guys just get their game dialed in because they know there's a major the next week, like a technical major. So they bring their best to Craig Ranch, and that's why they t- tear it up, so to speak. Yeah. But, I mean, Craig Ranch, is, it's brought the the defense this week. I don't know if we're, you know, transitioning into C Ranch. But, um, sure. I mean, I don't even know if Jordan got his Wells Fargo taken, to be honest. Yeah, you can keep going. Oh. <laughs> we started talking about golf courses. You know, the thing with Wells Fargo, too, is, like, I, I mean, it was Jordan's first time playing there since 13 besides the President's Cup. I haven't seen enough of it, but it's just, I mean, I think for a tour venue, it's like right in the middle in terms of quality. I don't think it's an awful golf course. I think for a major, it's bad. I'll, I'll give you that. I mean, you look at the future PGA venues, they have like a Ronamink coming up, which no thank you. That hosted a BMW a few years ago. I feel yeah. most of the courses on tour that host regular tour stops and, you know, a major, just no thank you. I yeah. mean, there's plenty of good courses. You don't need a course that hosts the Wells Fargo to host the PGA, or you don't need Pebble to host the US Open. I don't care how classic it is, but right. uh, it is what it is. I don't think Jordan will be back at Quailhollow anytime soon, besides the 2025 PGA. And it's funny, though. We're, we're mentioning courses that have you know hosted a tour event that hosts majors. Beth Page used to host the freaking, what, the Deutsche Bank, I think. And yeah, you don't see Beth Page that hosting. or the Barclays or something. Yeah, the Barclays, the Deutsche Bank, something like that. And you don't see – I think we all like Beth Page, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's kind of nice to have – major courses are major courses and tour venues are tour venues. I kind of wish they'd keep to that. I'd agree. I think that's fair. I mean, look, uh, Craig Ranch is building toward its major. Um, <laughs> and I, I think we're – this I if Craig Ranch doesn't play any defense this week, I'm gonna be a little disappointed. Um it's gonna be what? The wind's finally gonna blow a little bit. So it's gonna it's not it's a pretty big ballpark actually, um, in terms of the opportunities to hit long irons. And that was something that if Jordan was playing, uh I was actually gonna bring up was that because this Jordan, podcast Jordan, Hi. has brought up a lot that Jordan Spieth, golfer Jordan, has not had the best um, approach numbers or approach game from 200 plus. I think that's that's your kind of stat there, right? Um, and Craig Ranch offers some opportunities to hit long irons. They changed number 12 to a par four. Um, the rough will be up a little bit this year. Wind can get blowing a little bit in Texas and you have to flight some down, move some around. The par threes are pretty long. There's some long par fours. Um, so if it's soft and not running, you know, it'd be a good chance to kind of fine tune or, or work on or, um, get challenged by some long irons. Um, 
And I like I like the changes that they've made, right? The par five to a par four, I think, is great. The rough up helps quite a bit, uh, makes it a little bit more penal on the sides. And then, you know, just let the wind blow, and we'll see. I mean, this could be, like, an over par winner, and I I, <laughs> I don't know about all that. But that would be my that'd be my dream right there. Um, no, I think, but I don't think it reaches twenty five under this week. And if it does, might have to have some discussions with the people at Craig Ranch who continually make this golf course look like a joke uh, when it is clearly, um, you know, when you kind of peel the the onion layers back, clearly one of the best uh, golf courses uh, in the world. So um, I look forward to seeing it's, it's, it's true sort of beast unleashed this week, which I know excites you guys a lot as well, too. I can see yeah. it on Bob's face. I mean, I might watch over two and a half minutes of the coverage this week. Mm. Yeah, who knows? Interesting. I think you Thanks might for Bob mute. being on mute. <laughs> it depends if Cage Lee is in contention. <laughs> Interesting. Yes, he will be going for the major three Pete. Yes. Which uh I don't think's happened in, in over seventy five years. Really? Uh I believe some I feel bad not knowing their name. Uh, but I think he won it the US Open three times in the fifties. Hogan? I feel like I would have remembered if it was Hogan. Um, and then, of course, like the 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 Morrises from England won the Opens like a bunch five of times in, in a row. row. They yeah. Don't count. Um, they don't count. But post World War II, I think there's one guy who did it, and I feel bad for not having his name, so I'm gonna look that up right now. Hogan won four U.S. Opens in like a six year stretch. Yeah, I'm Hogan not. had a lot. Um, there was one guy who could have had five Opens in a row. But he won, like he won two, three, and five, and not one and four. But he lost by a total of like two shots or something. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll figure out who that is and who KH Lee is trying to catch this week. But uh, I do believe he is a good play this week. I don't know if we want to transition into that at all. Oh, yes, works. I but... I would love to start. Go ahead. By all means, um, Folks, I present to you the KH Lee trifecta this week. <laughs> yes. Four plays, three of them KH Lee involved. And I will give them all to you right now. Yes. Um, so, obviously, the staple KH Lee first round leader for 10 at 40 to 1. At 24 to 1, KH Lee to win and complete the three peats. <laughs> And then 60 on Cage Lee to top 20. Um, so those are those are my, oh, my final. I'll just give them all. And then I have Tom Kim for my last 20 to win. So I like it. I can go next. Um, yeah. I have three plays. I'm also on Cage Lee. I was an outright. Um, my two outrights, I went with the two guys that are at the top of the board. Um, I don't see with our 100 points the it's just not worth it for me to try and figure out who in the 50 to 130 range is going to win. Um, there's like 40 guys there. And I mean, this, this golf court tournament can be won by so many dudes. So I went with Scheffler and Hatton 25 each. If either of them won, I'd win for the week. And I mean, I think the odds of Scheffler winning are probably about what he was. He's plus 350. I mean, I give him a 25% chance to win probably. Um, yeah. So him and Hatton. And then for my placement, I did go with KH Lee to top 20. Still trying to figure out the, well, a 50 on KH Lee to top 20 to pay out 110. And those are my three plays this week. Very simple. Nice. I H. have to finalize my plays. Yeah. Um, But I really like Terrell Hatton this week. I think he's just been playing good golf. I know Quail Hollow, he played well, T3. Uh, obviously, this week will play quite a bit different. Sterner test, of course. Um, but I think in the wind, the length, I think Hatton's ready for that. And I think this is a good spot for him to break through in sort of a field that's not um, as strong because obviously Ranch kind of scares the best players away yeah. uh, for the most part. 
Um, it, it's it's a it's a course that definitely demands you kind of just sack up. You know, you right. just have to be, you you have to be mentally prepared to walk into that golf course and be okay with seven birdies not being enough. You know. <laughs> Well, it's, it, right. but no, that's not a shot at ranch. It, it's it's it, it's the reason why the top players don't play. They just they're they know that they're gonna have to take their game to an next level. Right. No, I I I think that's really well said. Um, I do think it'll be more like three birdies this year instead of seven. Fair. Um, that would be great to hear. Great to see. And I think uh, that you know Craig Ranch will show the world that it truly is. Um, one of the best world class. Uh so that's Hatton to win. Um and then Michael Kim. He's been playing some good golf, a solo seven last week at Quail Hollow. I'm um, just looking at his page right now. T thirty in Mexico ain't great. Uh neither yeah. is the, some of the other ones here. But uh <laughs> I, I don't know. His, his numbers are in Puerto Rico, Dan. His numbers are better that. than his finishes would suggest. So I think I can Get some decent odds on him to play pretty well this week. Uh, and then Matt Kuchar. Uh, I'll probably find a three ball at some point. I've got a. Um, I've been so obsessed looking at the golf course that I haven't really <laughs> got into some of the odds and the three balls and stuff. But um, wow, DraftKings doesn't even have it on their popular thing. That's pathetic. What? The tournament. <laughs> oh my god. It also stinks that like we're in a tough cool. stretch of betting this 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 time of year. I know that we're all in the red right now, which is disappointing. This is a tough stretch. Hopefully, once we get past here, um, it'll be a little easier to gauge who's going to be winning golf tournaments. That would be the hope. I would agree. Um, so yeah, Matt. I guess Matt Cooter's in a three ball with Cage Lee and Tom Kim, so I'll probably avoid that, but. Yeah, that's what I was looking at, and I just I couldn't do it. One that kind of sticks out to me is um, Bazadenhout over Jaeger and Hoagie. Uh, although Tom Hoagie's plays in Texas, flusher the golf ball. I have to I have to look at some data golf numbers to kind of finalize it. But I know people like Bazadenhout this week as well, mm-hmm. um, so that could be a good kind of spot to check in on. I'm always I might depending on Hideki's number. Which I'll look at right now, eighteen to one. Oh, I don't know. I, I I'm always a sucker for playing Hideki Matsuyama. I know he hasn't played. You he's, are known to play Hideki Matsuyama. He's got some wrist, uh, or not some wrist. He's got some neck issues. Um, but he's back in solo three here last year. Um, uh, which you know he shot ten under on Sunday, but that was just that never much, drowned around the golf course. No, uh, well, I think Craig, I just. They didn't do it justice last year, you know. Um, they really didn't. They 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 didn't they toned it down too much, you know. And I think this year, if they let the beast prowl, which it seems like they're doing a little bit more, um, I'm ex- I'm expecting a fascinating golf tournament. So, um, I look forward to to waking up on Thursday and and watching. So does Scheffler win by eight or three this year? I would say, dude, imagine Cage Lee just chases down Scheffler. That would be incredible. Uh, that'd be awesome. I mean, Cage Lee, he's proven, right? I two sun two years ago on Sunday, the weather got really bad. Do Cage Lee stepped up, sacked up, and do uh, I, took care of business. Do I put a blue stamp of guarantee on Cage Lee first round leader? Those uh, plays are two and zero oh this year. Well, I could, I on could a first not round be leader. More. I could not be more confident in Cage Lee leading after the first round. He has started to play some good golf too. Maybe it'll be a tie for the lead, but it it'll be a lead. I don't know. I just I worry that Ranch's Ranch will get him back. You know, I think Ranch is out for revenge. And plausible theory. I'm not sure. That would not be good for my vets. Uh, I'm not. So. I'm not sure. I, to be honest, I mean, I could see. All right, I'll avoid. Stamp. I'll avoid the stamp of guarantee. I'll avoid the stamp of guarantee. I, yeah, I'd save that for Jay Spieth winning the PGA. Uh, <laughs> Although then it wouldn't hit anyway. But uh, regardless, yes, I can't do that to Jay Spieth. No, you can't. After I cursed him with an injury. Well, that might have been me because I bet him to win. So. 
but yeah, I'd say your, your presence is more, more powerful for sure. Um, you're, you're selling yourself short. Though. Well, no, I, you know, I, I feel like you're trying to get rid of the blame off your back. Well, nobody's blamed me. You guys going to blame me for not picking him? I no, <laughs> I, well, but Bob, Bob blamed himself. And I said, well, it could have been me, but I think I just, my, my energy is more positively powerful. I bet we mm. just blame the golf gods. I would say, I would say Bob may have some, some curses kind of hidden in his, in there. his, in his arsenal, so to speak. But um, psh, that's a good one. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Good week. I'm excited for Friday at what is it, five Eastern to see if we're playing next week. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, and the Saturday tea times are also important come Friday night. So that would have well, to be about where I am. There's either going to be a lot of joy or a lot of pain. Yeah. Of well, us. what do you, I, I mean, we said we wouldn't speculate. Ask it, Dan. Come on. But is what do we do we think we get a withdraw on Friday or no? I'm gonna say no. I think his name is on there, but I don't think that means he's in. I, I don't I don't think the decision is made Friday, personally. I would agree. But I think that means you his can name keep is the door open. The yeah. I yeah, I think Rob's right. Why would you take your name off Friday? Right. I, I think that's what I'm saying. Cannot pick up a club. Yeah. Well, and I think I, you know, God, I didn't want to go down this, but if his name is not on there Friday, um, big problems. Then yeah, we've got we've got some. This is not good type of stuff. Um, because I don't. There's no way he'd not play the PGA and then show up to Colonial. Or you his name's like, on there Friday. You can kiss Colonial goodbye. Or even the Memorial, probably. Probably. Um, so hopefully that's not the case. My guess is it won't be. Will he play? Don't know. But just the waiting game, man. It's not fun. Waiting game, yeah. It's not yeah. fun. But uh, yeah. yeah, if we keep talking, we're really gonna get into speculation. Yeah, I know, I know. We're um, we're getting there right now, but yeah, regardless. but. Uh, we know you guys want a podcast. We gave it to you. I know this is a little bit shorter than usual. We gave our ranch picks. Obviously, still a major week. Yep. I had to do it justice with the podcast. I know you guys probably want us to speculate a little more than we did, but well, we don't know anything. We're we're usually kept in the loop somewhat, but there's just there's nothing to be kept in the loop about, right? Like, yeah. No, there's so I something think he's we, obviously I think George, very tight, which he should. Some people uh-huh. think like we have like we can just go ask the speed camp and you know get these answers. <laughs> like that's just not the case. I mean, I and we'd get, the, we'd get the same response everybody else would get. And if we did, we they wouldn't tell us. So yeah, it's yeah, exactly. Which they shouldn't. It's right. I I'm agree with that. Not. So we anyway. don't have we unfortunately do not have uh the speeds on our speed dial. They're not exactly exactly. You know. <laughs> Almost, Cont- but I, contrary to yeah. popular belief. Well, contrary yeah, so to popular I, belief, I do not have Jordan Spieth's phone number. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we know we know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. Right. Who might but, knows a guy whose cousin might know a guy. But that guy's uh, just not being told anything right now. Who, and that's who right. follows Spieth on Instagram? Exactly. Uh, but that's about it. I mean, we do we do know Frank Spieth. <laughs> we do know Frank. Spieth. We do know Frank. We know Frank. Yes. Uh, Frank is a distant relative, though. I wouldn't say he's close <laughs> with Spieth himself. Um, but anyway. maybe, maybe in the coming weeks, Frank will be able to let us know, you know, some of the inside scoop. Be nice. Um, but yeah. until Frank lets us know, <laughs> we will um, sign off. <laughs> hopefully, sign see off. you for a preview on Monday. But happy Ranch Week! Yes, enjoy, enjoy it. All those soak it in. Right? One of the greatest weeks of the year. Some, argue, some would argue the Some greatest week of the year besides the Masters. Could be. I mean, that the, it's just always a thrilling Sunday at, at Ranch. So I um, agree. It, it'll be Revenge of the Ranch this year, I think, is the, kind of the fitting fitting name for this week. Uh, and I'm excited. So, till then. Peace. Peace. Take care.